So after two and a half long years, Japan is finally opening its borders to tourists like you. Here's what you have to know. Boom, new angle. Bet you didn't see that one coming. So number one, how open will Japan be? Well, after a few, I would say failed attempts, at opening with guided tours and then you had to book with a travel agency so it wouldn't be guided tours but you would still have itinerary that that's all done you are free to roam the country as you please as of this tuesday october 11th from what i've been reading and what i've been seeing it seems like everything will go back to normal there's no arrival cap so before i think japan was capping any foreign arrivals at like 50,000 a day or something like that no more of that you don't have to worry about being number 50,001 and being denied you are free to come into the country as long as you have all the required documents and this brings me on to number two what required documents do you need by the way I will be putting all of the links where I got this information into the description it's mostly from the Japan Ministry of Foreign Affairs here and the Japan Times and a couple other articles that I will be referencing throughout the video. So I'm just summing them up for you so you don't have to do all the reading. Okay, so what required documentation is there? Well, first of all, you definitely need your passport and your customs information as you would any trip ever. Provide information on what you're bringing into the country, etc. Something very important to note is there is no longer an arrival or pre-departure COVID test requirement. The big asterisk on this is if you are not vaccinated, if you have none of the vaccines, you do need to test before you leave. You need to be ready to provide a negative COVID test within 72 hours, just as you would have if you traveled during the pandemic. If you have a certificate showing you are triple vaccinated, you do not need to take a pre-departure or pre-arrival COVID test. I'm also very happy to report that there is no longer a quarantine period, so you won't have to spend the first few days of your precious time visiting Japan in a hotel. This brings me to what's kind of our final point is masks. I know a lot of places in the West, because I'm from Canada and when I moved here, in July, masks were gone in Canada. Like people wore them as a preference, but there weren't rules anymore. Here in Japan, I would say 90% of indoor spaces do still require masks. So be prepared and be cooperative. Please wear masks. It's it's part of the culture. It's been part of the culture since long before the pandemic. So yeah, be prepared to wear a mask. Just just, just do it. It's not the worst thing in the world and you'll have a much easier time getting around with one. So I asked over on Instagram on my story what kind of questions you guys had about traveling in Japan, preparing to plan your maybe your first trip here. So let's see what people asked. All right, Mark asks, how English friendly is it there or how much Japanese should you go with? So if you're in a bigger city like Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, Sapporo, like one of the big tourist hubs, you will have no problem getting around with little to no Japanese. So don't let the language barrier stop you. However, I do highly, highly recommend that you download the Google Translate app onto your phone and you can actually save Japanese to English translation and English to Japanese translation to offline use so you won't need to worry about always having data or Wi-Fi to use it and with the Google Translate app you can take pictures of Japanese text and it will translate it for you and it, it does a pretty good job so you will be able to order off menus with no English you can type out uh, English phrases translate it to Japanese and you can show people if you're asking for directions or something you can show people the translation and it does a pretty dang good job I find most Japanese people can kind of decode it if it's not quite right. I, I speak a pretty good amount of Japanese, but I definitely do still rely on the Google Translate app from time to time. Uh, Ethan asks, can you turn left on a red light in Japan? So coming from Canada, we drive on the right side of the road and you can take a cheeky right at a red light and that's perfectly legal. Here in Japan, we drive on the left side of the road. So you would think maybe I could take a left turn on a red light, but the answer is no, you cannot turn left on a red light. Red light is stop regardless of lane position. And there are actually turn arrows at every intersection to show you when it is safe to make that left-hand turn. Devin asks, how safe would it be traveling as a single female? I would say Japan is probably one of the safest, if not the safest country for solo female travelers. Talking to female friends of mine who have come here solo or come here on exchange or come here with a small group of female friends, they said they have never felt more comfortable in a country, especially at night. But here in Japan, it is as safe as walking around during the day. So just 
trust your gut, be safe. Maddie asks, how much money should I bring for my stay in Japan? I would say if you want to be very comfortable and not have to really pinch pennies, I recommend about 5,000 yen budgeted per day. That's about 45 to 50 dollars Canadian. I don't know what that is in freedom dollars. This will leave you enough elbow room to do some sightseeing, be able to grab some good food at non-fast food restaurants and still have a little bit of pocket change at the end of the day to buy some souvenirs or play at some arcades or whatever you wanna do with your time. Andre asks, do you need any paperwork or visas to travel? I hope this video answered that question, but just to sum it up, if you're coming to Japan, you will only need the normal travel documents. So passport, you'll need to fill out your customs that they give you on the plane. On top of that, you will need a certificate or documentation supporting that you are triple vaccinated, or if you're unvaccinated, you will need your passport, your customs form, as well as a negative COVID test within 72 hours. May asks, what is your favorite hidden gem? I would say one of my favorite hidden gems right now is in Tokyo. It's a place called Yorakcho. I didn't take any video clips, so I'll put some pictures right now on screen while I describe it. It's this super cool, like cyberpunk, retro vibe restaurant street that's underneath some train tracks. So when you grab a bite to eat or a drink there, every once in a while, a train will shoot over top and the lights will shake. And it's this really cool, that retro Japan Blade Runner style thing that I really love. Austin asks, even though travel is open, are there any restrictions that travelers should be aware of? As far as I'm aware, everything is just back to normal, back to daily routine. So just be smart, be safe. Um, I guess the only restriction, if you want to call it that, to be aware of are the rules with masks. Um, I would, like I said, about 90% of indoor spaces do still require masks, especially public transportation. So if you see a sign asking you to wear a mask or if everyone around you is wearing a mask, just please be respectful. It's part of the culture here. You'll have an easier time getting around with one. So always have one on you and be prepared to throw it on if you need to. Shannon asks, best length of time to spend in Japan for a visit? Is a week enough time to see the country? I would say a week is not quite enough time. I would highly recommend if you can swing it, if it's reasonable for you to do, two weeks minimum. It gives you time to travel, time to sightsee, and time to relax. So yeah, tough question, but I highly recommend at least two weeks if that's something you can do. If you can only come for one week, make the best of it. I'd recommend just staying in one spot. Don't try to see too much because then you'll spend most days traveling and not enough time experiencing Japan. I really hope that answered your question. Austin asks, how do you know what is allowed to be photographed and what is not? Typically, if something is not allowed to be photographed, there will be signs there. Uh, a good example of this is inside of temples or inside of shrines. There are no photographs allowed, no video allowed. And there will be signs telling you this. Or if you are about to enter, someone will tell you, hey, no pictures, no video. And another question here, what are some good phrases or words to know? I will make a, a video completely dedicated to useful phrases that I think you need to know if you want to have the best possible experience here in Japan. Like I said, you don't really need Japanese to travel through here as long as you have Google Translate. But if you do know a couple of these keywords or key phrases, it will significantly improve your experience. There's no better icebreaker here than dropping just a few keywords or a few key phrases on a night out and it will completely change your experience here. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Plan your trip, pack your bags, queue up the Joe Hisaishi playlist because it's almost time. We will see you in Japan soon. Peace.